This is Writers Not Writing, the show where you can get to know your favorite writers and soon-to-be favorite writers by listening to them confess to the ways they procrastinate. Thanks for procrastinating with us. I'm Benjamin Gorman, and the quiet guy behind the glass there is Doug the producer. I write novels and collections of poetry and stuff. Doug tries his best to make me sound better. And each week we have a secret word to listen for. If you catch it, you earn the right to take an extra break at the time of your choosing from whatever is stressing you out. From Not A Pipe Publishing, welcome to Writers Not Writing. Today's secret word is Sith. Salutations, hail and well-met readers and reviewers. Welcome. Today's guest is B. Dave Walters. Uh, B. Dave Walters is a motivator, storyteller, unifier, and creative revolutionary content, like a mix of between Oprah, Tony Robbins, and the Old Spice Guy. He's a writer of Dungeons & Dragons, A Darkened Wish for IDW Publishing, and Wizards of the Coast. He appears as Victor Temple on Vampire Masquerade LA by night uh, on Geek and & Sundry, and as Chato on We're Alive Frontier on Project Alpha. He's also currently hosting the Rundown series for 20th Century Fox and Ask Your Black Geek Friend, also on Project Alpha. In addition to being a writer and co-creator of the Electropunks comic series, he's the winner of the Be the Next BeliefNet feature blogger contest for BeliefNet.com uh, in the Hope and Inspiration category. Uh, he is featured panelist at San Diego Comic-Con and WonderCon on the topic of spiritual themes in comics and media. He's also the host of Rise Up with B. Dave Walters on Party 93 FM out of Hudson Valley, New York, as well as a nationally syndicated columnist on the topics of spirituality and relationships for TheExaminer.com. And he's the author of the book 49 Lost Secrets of Peace, Love, and Money. Welcome, B. Dave Walters. Very good to have you here today. Yes. Yeah, that is the dozens and dozens of my fans cheering. So, uh, friends friends watching at home i want yeah. you to know uh the, the, this fine fellow was like do you want to proof your bio do you want to know this do you want to that and i was like nope we'll go in blind and then yes all of those things are true i did all those things i just did those things like years ago i was wondering uh, how outdated yeah. is that all, yes. yeah, all new shows all new books all new things but that those things are accurate that, that well, is true. What's, so what 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 are the what you know let's update it in real time what's going mm. on now well, uh, it is I, B. Dave Walters. You can find me all over the interwebs, wherever fine streaming content can be located. Uh, let me guess. Since then, since then, um, I've written and produced uh, films. I've written and produced television. I've acted in television. Uh, I host a podcast about writing called uh, Writing About Dragons and Shit, which you can find wherever fine uh, podcasts are located. Listen to right after you get done listening to this one. Yes, yes. Wait, please. Yeah, wait. No, finish this one. Um and all sorts of other things. And then now I'm teaching writing and uh, playing and dungeon mastering and TTRPG creation at a professional level on my website, which is the undisputedacademy.com. Oh, that's uh, I think, excellent. I think, How's that yeah. going? Are you liking the teaching? Oh, I love it. I, I've, I've, I've taught for a long time. I used to teach at a small college. Uh, I mean, I've run uh, countless seminars, workshops, all that. I was just explaining to my youngest uh, when we were out on a walk, anything I like I like talking about, and I also like teaching, like yes. whatever it is. So it's martial arts, um, you know, writing, you know, philosophy and spirituality, like you name it. I will wax philosophical about almost anything. Yes, that, yeah, I, that I like. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, to 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 a dangerous degree. Like it becomes mm -hmm. like you know, my friends are like, "You are mansplaining this thing," and I'm like, "No, I just want to talk about it all the time." Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, the folks who are watching on YouTube can already see the costumes we're wearing. But for the sake of the podcast listeners, tell everybody about this costume you chose to wear today. Uh, Kryptonian ceremonial regalia, you know, because uh, I, I knew this was going to be uh, an, an important event. You know, I, I had to I had to show up and, and represent, you know, for for my clan and country. Very formal, uh, yes, excellent, Robes. and very, I you know, very flowy, high collars. Yes, and I saw that and went with the 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 formal uh, Green Lantern core, uh, you know, outfit. Uh, I've got mm -hmm. the ring. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, you know, capable of making anything, and yet I end up making silly things with my imagination, thanks to this green ring. Uh, but uh, yes, I, 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 I'm glad we are, we are, you know, we're we're prepared for today. It's always um, finest. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, to show about procrastination, what we're doing when we're not doing our work. So what has mm. been a favorite distraction this week 
you know, uh, uh, pop culture wise that's pulling you away from your writing? Uh, anime, uh, Free Rin. Uh, Free, Free Rin, uh, I think the full title is Free Rin Beyond beyond something i don't know it either it might be ending this week or the last episode might have ended last week i've been watching it on crunchyroll it is um it, it is one of my very favorite storytelling concepts that i've used as an inciting incident lots of times it was the inciting incident for my comic book uh dungeons and dragons a dark and wish in fact well, that's another thing i did although i think you mentioned i did that one. yeah i think i got that um <laughs> um where it's the heroes that have to come out of retirement to save the world one more time basically uh, kind of the premise of Free Run is it's like it's what happens afterwards. It's like after the Lord of the Rings, after every, like they've already saved the world. Yes. But now you have this elf who's functionally immortal and all of her friends are getting old and dying. And she's sort of like retracing her steps of the thing they did when they saved the world. And it's beautiful. It's just kind of like a Miyazaki series. It's a very kind of slow burn. It's kind of like chill and meditative. It's not like a lot of flying around and screaming and throwing fireballs, which quite frankly is usually what I like and usually what I consume. So having something that is a little more lo-fi has been interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, yeah, it allows it allows it it satisfies that, you know, fireball throwing need of knowing, oh, these are the characters who did that. Only yep. now it's, you know, <laughs> well, what are what are the the, the actual repercussions of all, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the triumphalism? Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. That's the whole thing. Beyond on Crunchyroll. Yeah, because I, I have not Free seen Ren. that one yet. So I, that'll I'll add that to my uh, my queue. Um, yeah. So what about in the news? What's been pulling you away from your work that is d distracting you, drawing your attention away? Oh, that everything's on fire. You know, I mean, uh, I'm I bleed blue. I am a leftist, so I consume a lot of news media. Yeah. Uh, so the the fact that um, that orange disgrace may well get away with all of this. And, you know, it used to be like, hmm, I don't want to offend people. I'm like, nah, if that offends you, no. go fuck yourself. Yeah, yep. right. I have, I have uh, crossed so. that line. I wrote a piece mm -hmm. back in uh, like 2017 where I was like, this isn't politics. Like, if you're saying that the people that I care about need to be deported or killed, like, yeah. we're not we're not friends anymore. Yeah. It's like, not it's it's not a both sides argument anymore. So, uh, yeah, yeah, just getting neck deep in that the Supreme Court delaying things to the fact that it's like essentially justice is not going to prevail in time. So uh, nobody's coming to save us. We must save ourselves. I wonder how can't. soon somebody's going to get charged with a crime and realize all you have to do is announce that you're running for president. And I mean, set the precedent that you can just get away with anything. I mean, I think that is very quickly the there would be another Supreme Court decision that would say, oh, but only for white billionaires like yep. that really only works. You know, you know, anybody else. Yep. No, you can't just announce you're going to run for president. But you know, here's, here's our exception. We yeah. do have two two legal systems. Yep. Very mm -hmm. much so. Yeah. And hypocrisy knows no end. But that's OK. But but again, the people have shown up since 2018. The people have shown up in 2018, 2020, 2020 and 2022. And I have every confidence that they will show up again in 2024. I, it's going to be I, all right. I hope so. I am so anxious. But uh, yes, yeah. I, I, you know, please, people. <laughs> yeah. Fight to the last second, though. And for the, and for the love of God, no protest votes. No protest no. votes. No. You, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, how will you yeah. justify that to yourself later? Like, that's what I think about is, you know, when you look back and yeah. go, oh, wait, all this horror that is going on in another Trump presidency, I chose this? Like, no, it's you know. Pro protest votes got us into this mess in 2016. Yeah. Again, people seem to have learned their lesson in 2020, you know. So um, I, I have faith in the American people that uh, that they will do the right thing. And quite frankly, if they don't, uh, you probably won't get another shot at it. So that's yeah, this is our last. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's it's you know, every time we say this is the biggest election and it's like yeah, no, it is. This, is, this is potentially the last election. Yeah. So you know, it's, like... it, the wildest thing about all of this and something I won't say I will never understand because I absolutely understand it now. But I will go to my grave being astonished that it was this close. He's got a real shot at winning, yep. a real shot. Yep. Despite and it's, and it's all being of this. open about I me, mean, he's saying the quiet part yeah. out loud. I'm yep. going to be a dictator on day one, and people are yep. still going, "That sounds good." And I'm yeah, like, that's like, well, because you're just going to hurt the people I don't like, and that's, it's like they, that's how it starts. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's how it starts. And, yep. And, mm -hmm. and 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 they think, and then he'll stop. He'll never come after yep. me. Right. You know? Yeah, it is. It is. Striking. I can't believe leopards ate my face. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, th th when we're not terrified about that, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on uh, hobby wise? What do you have? What have you been keeping yourself busy with that draws you away from your work? You've got a lot going on other than your writing, too. Yeah, I mean, per, in, into perpetuity, I think um, 
I, I kind of keep myself on a fairly short leash because I know what I am. I only play one video game. I only play Genshin Impact. Um, I don't play Baldur's Gate. Uh, and everybody's like, it's so good. And I'm like, I believe you. Yes, you know? exactly. But because but I, I, I am, I will 100% complete something. And I don't have 200 or 500 hours to give to a thing. And I will. Yep. So uh, that was one of mine where I was like, I have to wait until Christmas break. Because mm -hmm. otherwise I would call in sick. <laughs> like, it would yeah. suck my life yeah. away. Yeah. Everybody's like, it's so cool. I'm like, I know. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it's, I, yeah. I a thousand percent believe you. Um, yeah. So I, I, I kind of moderate myself in that way. It's in, and I also know like, um, it even comes down to like, uh, snacks and stuff. Like, I mean, I don't keep snacks and junk food around because I'll eat it because I can. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't even put myself in a position where like willpower has to prevail. Uh, spend a lot of time in the gym too, but I, to me, that's still, that's still work though. Uh, because you know, got to be camera ready at all times. So, yeah. Yeah. And so you're, uh, what all are you doing TV wise now? As of this exact second, nothing with television and got some movies that are in, uh, in production. Yeah. Um, but you know, being in production, means it could film next month or it could film next never right right <laughs> yeah i was talking to a, a a producer about you know so i run the small press and so we're always shopping our stuff right and uh mm -hmm. and uh she was telling me she's an agent a hollywood mm -hmm. agent she was telling me uh the the, the whole film industry is like a wiley e. coyote cartoon mm -hmm. where you are you know everybody is trying to uh you know straddle some giant cliff and if mm -hmm. any one person along the way says no the whole thing falls down and right. And so everybody's just waiting on that next no. <laughs> and, and you can have spent years uh, working on something. And you can be told, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, we were we made it so far as last October. We were told it's like the money is sent. The wire is sent. Not even we're about to. The money's on the way. It is now March 2nd. That money never showed up. So yep. it's just like stuff like that. Well, and this HBO one wasn't, uh, they, they crossed a new threshold. It used to be, okay, once the money is at least spent, they'll do something with it because mm -hmm. they don't want to just throw it away. And then yep. for this, uh, what was it, Coyote versus Acme or something like that, they just went, no, it's a tax write-off. It's yep. done. And, you know, and I just, for all the people involved in that, I just feel so badly that they invested so much time and energy and it's just canned uh, you know, we'll see you know if somebody at some point goes no we're going to pull it off the shelf but something i will share with almost everybody that is aspiring to a creative life um except in advance there is no big break there is no one thing there is yep. the, there there are things that might advance you but but banish from your mind now the idea that it's like I will write this book and it will be a new york times bestseller and you know my ticket is punched and my career is made it's like nope yeah, I, I I can think of I can think of a four four separate times in my own life that I was like, oh, I've done it. Yeah, I'm I'm in. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. I, I have achieved escape velocity, and it's you know it's smooth sailing from here on out. Uh, in a narrator voice, it was not. Yeah. No, and and I think I can think of a couple of cases where author stories are that, you know, it explodes and it takes off and it actually is harmful to all the rest of us because those people won the lottery. In fact, it's worse odds than the lottery. Yep. And, you know, and and then so many people look at that and go, that's going to be me. No, no, yep. no, it's not. You're, you've got better odds of getting struck by lightning. Like yeah, you're going to have to put is, in the work. It is statistically improbable. Yes. I mean, it's good to have in the back of your mind that it can be done. You know, if, if it has ever happened ever, it can be done. Yes. But what? moderate your expectations and moderate what uh, a win looks like. And the, and the best way to insulate yourself is to enjoy the process. Right. That is your that is your only defense. Yeah, well, and I, you know, I mean, Harper Lee, one book until she was, you know, in her 80s, you know, her whole life is set, right? It's in every, it's, in, I'm teaching it, it's in every high school classroom, right? But well, they're that's trying not to the, pull it, but yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the life I would want. I like to sure. write, you know, yep. I would keep going. And and so I, you know, tell all the authors I work with, if you want your career to take off, you know, yes, you have to do all the marketing stuff, but the best thing you can do is next, write a better book. Yep. And then when you're done with that one, write a better book. <laughs> you're just going to have I mean, to keep going and learning and improving, you know, but that's always, hard to hear. Yeah. And you're always going to look back and realize how you could have done it better. 
Um, right. And because theoretically your skills have increased, hopefully. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. and also the market itself changes. And so mm -hmm. you're always going, if I had known, if I mm -hmm. hit this at the right moment, if I'd, you know, if I'd, if I'd made that pitch for that particular, you know, TV show or movie before it came out. Well, sure, mm -hmm. of course, but you couldn't possibly have known. So correct. do good work, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, so this next question, I have been excited to ask you because it is perfect for you. So mm -hmm. I always ask authors, if you yourself, not a character you are playing, but if you mm -hmm. yourself were a character in D&D, &D, what would mm -hmm. be your race and class as kind of a Rorschach for who you are as a person? So if you, if B. Dave Walters was the character in D&D, &D, what would be your race and class? Let me just say one thing before I answer that question. Uh, do good work and be a good person. Um, yes. Because word spreads and yes. everybody knows everybody. And oh, yeah. It, if you're if you're a jerk it comes back around like it's that train's never late it ta it takes longer to arrive for some people than others but that train is never late yeah i, I have had that experience um, where i've said to myself okay the reason we are publishing this person is because this is a person i want to work with you yep. know it absolutely makes a difference yeah um i would be a goliath valor bard Sorkin. I'd be three classes. My main freely was four classes. My, he was a halfling, bard, paladin, warlock, sorcerer. The real me, I don't actually need any warlock, although Eldritch Blast is nice having shotgun fingers. Yes. But um, yeah, uh, Valor Bard, Sorkin. Um, probably... Because Sorkin is the, the strongest combination. I could get away with just Sorkin. But would I be Valor Bard or would I be Lord? I'd be Lore Bard. Mechanically, that is is less effective mechanically. Um, but both the ability to buff friends with kind words and cutting words, people with negative, because I can cut people down pretty quickly just by talking trash about them. So probably not a ton of levels of Paladin, maybe just like three. Um, and then probably six levels of sorcerer and probably 11 levels of bard i'd need to i'd have to look at the individual level breaks of what you get when but that that's probably it three three six and eleven yeah it's probably about right and, and goliath because uh for those of you that don't realize i'm six foot nine three hundred pounds so I'm... <laughs> you're six nine i did not realize mm -hmm. that yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh and but does does being a Goliath in D and D feel right? Does being six nine feel right for your personality? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the only other thing that would come to mind would be an Asimar because I, I just I love Asimar. Um, I mean, the the emo kid in me would be like, I'd be a fallen Asimar. Do I am <laughs> actually? Nah, just Asimar, Asimar, probably guardian, <laughs> probably. Um, no, I, I like Goliath fine. I like yeah, Goliath I mean, fine. How has being essentially a Goliath in our world, you know, affected your life? Like I imagine, you know, if I'm if I'm casting, I'm going, I'm getting B. Dave Walters for this part. It's right? great. I love it. Um yeah. well, entertainment wise, I either end up playing monsters or a dude who loses a fight to a little guy because the oh. works of fiction. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Tom Cruises of the world love beating up the me's of the world. Um it, but otherwise, no, it's great. Um, I would not want to be any taller. I mean, part of, on a certain level, I wouldn't mind being seven foot purely for the novelty of being able to say I was seven foot. Right, right. But on a practical level, I want to be no bigger. Yeah, no, like no, this, no. I'm, there are I'm, a lot I'm of good. doorways that you would be yeah. running into, uh, all, you know. Which to tell people to get an idea of exactly how big that is. I am essentially exactly the door. Like if you look behind you, like my head goes right to the frame and my shoulders go both to the sides. Like that's it. If you want, like, a scale in your house, dear yeah. listener, of what I'm actually like, turn and look at the door. That's me. I'm the door. I, I've got a couple of friends who are, you know, six five, six six, and I was doing some building of stuff in my backyard, and I was thinking of them going, I want to make sure they don't hit their heads. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the construction is different uh, when you're, you know. Um, I got I got a number of scars on my head. Yes. 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 Do I mean? Do you have when you are car shopping? I'll bet you're going. Okay. Uh, you know, I got to get in and out of this thing without hitting my head. 
Believe it or not, it's actually not so terrible because I'm pretty evenly split between my upper body and lower body. Like I got long legs, but not comedically so. Mm. It's like riding in planes and stuff. Obviously, the exit row is optimal. Uh, you know, just sitting in a normal plane is not ideal, but I can. You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not like Shaq, where just like some things are just you know off limits type thing. It's uh so I'm, I'm I'm fortunate in that respect. I mean, I've I've had uh, like my stepbrother drove an Accord, and I would have to let the seat back so much that my head was in the back window. Like I'd pull up to intersections yes. and I'd turn and look at people. Sometimes I'd act like I was scared, and then ride the car take off because I'm in the back seat. And no one's in the front seat. I would do that to mess with people a lot. Are, are you walking into shoe stores and just walking back out? Like no. So I you would shoe stores. I walk in and I add the first question is always, "What's the biggest size you've got?" Or I will bring one of my shoes and I will show them. And I'll be like, I need one this big. Because with shoes in particular, there is a broad spectrum of what sizes actually mean. It's not standard. Uh, I own shoes from size 12 to 15 that fit because that's just what was written on them. So I'm just right. like, what's the biggest? Like, bring yeah. me your cartoonish Lurch Sunday grippers from the back. <laughs> and then I can be like, all right, now let's start. Let's start moderating from here. Yes, yes. I mean, does it does it keep you from being a sneakerhead, or is it like, okay, no, now I need to actually, you know, get way deep into this because I'm going to wear these things because uh, <laughs> you know, I better it's, love these. It's, I never was that guy. I think the only shoes I ever really cared about was Reebok pumps back in the day. That's yes. how old I am. Uh, yes. we're, we're portraying I'm, our age. We must be the same age. Yes, indeed. The, the, the BK Knights and then the the Reebok pumps. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, besides that, it was never really my thing. And actually, it's not that big of a problem because, again, usually those are basketball shoes and those do appeal to bigger guys. So it's usually not a problem getting that kind of thing. Yeah. The hardest thing, to tell you the truth, is pants. Um, because even when you go to big and tall places, uh, they're usually more big than tall. Yeah. So even if I get places that have my length, it's like the waist is like 10 inches bigger than me, you know, and I'm all like, <laughs> who's this portly bastard that yeah. these were made for like <laughs> yes. where is this guy you know like, yeah. i mean there was a time in the 90s that would have been fine right but sure uh, yeah. sure yeah. sure sure um That's, okay uh, that was an ill-advised time for the record <laughs> yeah right right yeah. how many people am i going to put in these pants with me yeah yeah uh well let's go to our ad break and when we come back i'm going to ask you what you've been daydreaming about lately mm, let's do it Special announcement time. Not a Pipe Publishing has always been committed to helping authors and readers find one another. Well, the show, which is all about helping readers get to know writers, just hit a milestone. 10,000 views on YouTube. So to celebrate, instead of charging authors to advertise their books on the show, I'm going to run your ads for free throughout 2024. If you want to make a 30 to 60 second video about your book, let folks know what it's about and where to find it. And don't forget your name and the title. Uh, I'll run one or two of those in our ad spot each week. Just send an MP4 file to the Not a Pipe email address in the show notes. Let's fix up some readers and authors into reader relationships. 2024. More readers, more writers, more books. Hello, my name is Fred Gambino. I've worked in the story industry for four decades as a film and game concept artist and a book cover artist. My love of story has led me to write my debut novel, Dark Shepherd be published by Newcom Press in May 2024. A fast-paced science fiction action thriller, it opens on the beach where starships are crashed from orbit in order to break them up. Breel is in charge of several giant dismantling machines and her job is to further take apart the shattered ships. Semi-freelance, she is one of many teams who work the beach, making money on the load she collects and sends to central processing. But the beach is a difficult place. Subject to misogyny and racism, she is unjustly fired, setting off a sequence of events that leads to her fleeing across the galaxy in the company of a ragtag group of misfits, pursued by agents of the ruthless and politically powerful Church of Second Light for a secret she didn't know she possessed. Only Brill can locate a mysterious rip, a wormhole that will leave humanity vulnerable to an ancient enemy, and only she stands a chance of closing it. Available for pre-order now at www.newcompress.co.uk An Accidental Hero, a mostly true wombat story by Laura Rediger and Debbie Palin is based on events during the aftermath of the Australian bushfires in 2020. Rescuers discovered animals sheltering in wombat burrows. Wombats were praised for providing a safe refuge underground. 
While they didn't invite other wildlife into their homes, they did truly become accidental heroes. The book is written as a newscast, with Koala and Emu at the news desk. Field reporter Kangaroo introduces readers to Wombat and her new friends. An Accidental Hero, a Mostly True Wombat Story by Laura Rediger and Debbie Palin. A STEM picture book published by iFrig Publishing, available at ifrigpublishing.com or wherever books are sold. For more about the author, go to lauraredigerbooks.com. Welcome back, everybody. So, Dave, when you've been daydreaming lately, what have you been daydreaming about? I would submit I don't daydream, but I visualize a lot. Um, and I see, and, and it's a small difference because I'm very intentional with my goal setting and my and, and the things that I want to accomplish. So I would say what's actually taking place in my inner universe very much might be considered daydreaming, but I don't consider it daydreaming because I intend for these things to happen. It's work, right? It's part <laughs> yeah. of the work. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is more goals. I spend a lot of time uh, focusing on that kind of thing and, and what I want to happen and how I want it to happen. Yeah. So what have you been thinking about lately about, you know, what's coming up in the future? Just more. I mean, I've been I've been very fortunate that I've been able to apply my trade as a full time creative for since 2018 now. But obviously that comes with its own ups and downs and its own difficulties. I think uh, people have I think there's two things. People have a big misconception about how much money people actually make in the creative world, you know, being a screenwriter, being a, you know, being a streamer, being on big prominent streams. Um, and sometimes those thoughts are not inaccurate. Like for instance, very, very common for me to make like 20 grand in a month, which sounds like a lot of money but until that. it's like, but what if that you don't make any money for the next six months? Right. You know what I mean? Then you're like, well, suddenly it's not that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a very boom and bust life, which uh, I, I can say this more now because I try to be very careful because I don't want to be insensitive, even though the pandemic was off, obviously a very difficult time for a lot of people. Um, and and the, the consequences of that time is still affecting some people. Uh, for me and those people in, in my area of work, it was great because everybody was home. Yeah. You know, so yeah. professionally, it was wonderful. Yeah. But now the the world is starting up again and all of that stuff is contracting, which is why you're seeing like the huge layoffs at game companies and things like that, yeah. because these companies saw the big uptick of of sales and things when, again, the world was home. Right. And, and hired and, and made decisions like that was going to last forever when anyone clearly could have seen it wasn't. Yeah. And so now they're experiencing this rapid contraction. And so, uh, you know, navigating that and navigating those seas, which is not difficult. I mean, which is not, which is not easy, rather. It is difficult. This is basically, yeah, what, what, what my mind's on. Yeah, we, we saw that contraction earlier in the publishing industry where right at the beginning of the lockdowns, everybody went, I'm going to buy a bunch of books. I've got time mm -hmm. to read and bought their books. Well, once they bought their books and that stack is sitting there and now they're falling into a deep depression and they're not reading any of them, it dried up. And so during yep. the, I mean, our sales just spiked and crashed uh, during yep. the lockdowns. Uh, and and I think, yeah, now the, you know, the the, the film industry and, and you know, they're, they're, they're catching up to that, uh, you know, hey, I hope you invested that money wisely because uh, it's people, people are going to be watching less. And yep. unfortunately, you know, so often it becomes the CEO's got to make the, you know, the, the the stock price look good. So what can you do in terms of taking action? Guess you just lay off a bunch of people. Uh, yep. You know, which is Un uh, it's hard to unchecked watch. Unchecked corporate greed. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, but one of the advantages you have is you've got these different kinds of streams. So you can mm -hmm. go, okay, I'm screenwriting now, and then I'm mm -hmm. writing a book, and then I, you know, mm -hmm. how do you how do you balance all of that? Uh, but you know, I, I I can imagine that it is really helpful to be able to shift projects in that way. It is. Well, I'd say two things. One one thing that I always advise would be creators, and I actually heard this from Mark Victor Hansen, the chicken soup for the soul guy years ago, mm -hmm. is always have multiple projects that you're working on because you will always feel inspired by one of them. Yeah. Um, you, you'll, with extremely rare exception, 
you won't get writer's block for literally everything, yeah. you know? So, you know, the the dungeon crawl about the kleptomaniac one-armed elf may not be doing it for you right now, but the space western about a bar on the edge of a black hole that every hour in there is actually a thousand years back home and people come here to drink and escape their problems on purpose, um, that might be really resonating with you right now. You know what I mean? And so it kind of pull you along. Um for me, a lot of times it's deadline driven. Uh, I actually have, it's hard for me to do things a hundred percent on spec um, because the bills are due no matter what. Pay the bills, right. Yeah. But by the same token, if you don't time to plant those seeds, you will never reap that harvest. So it's difficult. And I, I explain it to people in terms of just that the seeds you plant versus the seeds you eat, you know um, what can you do right now? Like a lot of times, like at this exact second, I have th four TTRPG deadlines of varying times. And then I have my own Patreon content of the TTRPG content, which I'm creating myself. Also, patreon.com forward slash B Dave Walters. Um, and then uh, whatever else I got to do on top of that, you know. So one thing that is a strength and a weakness of mine uh is that i i thrive under pressure i'm great with a deadline uh when, when the 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 harder things get the calmer i am but the problem is it can be very difficult to do things when everything's not on fire you know yeah. like if i got if i got six weeks to do something i'm going to do it in the last two weeks pending what it is i'm gonna do it in the last two days i might do it in the last two hours i know what i am but i will do it <laughs> <laughs> does it make it hard for you to say no in the first six weeks to something else because you're going oh it doesn't feel like i'm in crunch time now are you have you learned to say no to too many things i will stack things up pretty high yeah if if they, the, the only time i will really turn something down is if like physically i must be in two places at the same time uh besides the, if it's something i want to do of course um i i will i will find a way you yeah. know like that, that, that part's not hard for me and I enjoy it. Um, yeah. uh, but I yeah. struggle with that. I'm like, oh, that's a great thing to do. Oh, that would be a really fun thing to do. Oh, I'm doing 10 things. It's too much, you know, but I, I, I stress myself out. I'm trying to learn, uh, you know, to like look ahead and go, I'm going to be in crunch time for this. I should not say yes to this other thing that will overlap, but boy, it's hard when it's fun stuff. I'll, I'll find a way again, yeah. un unless, unless I physically can't. Yeah. Unless I'm like, if I I cannot be in the room with you and also be on the other side of town, then something's right. got to give. Yeah. But if I got to be on Zoom with you right now and I got to be on Zoom with someone else on the other side of town in a half hour, I'm like, yeah, sign me up. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. Or, or or I can get it to you earlier in the morning or at night or something like that. Um. But I like that. I like that. I like the fact that um I have a diversity of skills and options. And the reality is, in many ways especially social media wise, I would be further ahead, even though my, my, my following is pretty healthy, but I'd be further ahead if I just pick one thing. If yeah. I just pick one thing and I just like drill down on that thing all the time, because people, the audience in general in brands, especially want to put you in a box Yeah, that you are the person that does this thing. And I'm like, I'm the person that does lots of things and people don't like that. And I'm like, well, I'm just kind of going to keep doing lots of things though. <laughs> I, 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 in the exact same way, you know, I, yeah. I know for my career's sake, if I just wrote the same novel over and over and over, it would be, you know, much better off. And yet I'm going, no, the, the thing I'm excited about right now is this fantasy novel. And then it's this, you know, uh, now it's a science fiction novel. And now it's, yeah. uh, you know, I'm publishing these other folks work. And now, now I've got a poetry collection. And yeah, there are going to be people who say, yeah, but I don't like poetry. So I'm not I mean, following you into that. And I'm like, yeah, but that's that's what, you know, that's what uh, creates my my motivation. So um, I got I have friends who are very successful actors and then also uh, you know very active in the ttrpg community i don't need to bust anybody out or name drop but they're always talking about that but they're like it doesn't cross over you know like the fan that likes me from this tv show or this movie doesn't care that i'm playing D, &D this weekend which i super get but i mean career-wise uh in terms of people that have accomplished the things i've accomplished there's like j michael straczynski neil gaiman and me right <laughs> You know, obviously those guys have done it at at a, at a higher level than me. But in terms of you know, produced 
film produced right. television uh i don't think straczynski x gaiman has been on screen for a couple things i might have him there uh you know written comic books written novels and like published not just right. like did it and it's in a like it's a, it's out there and you can find it at barnes and noble you know um and i'm proud of that you know yeah. um, that that's that's mine for all time you know to be the first dungeon master with a campaign on television you know that right. is mine for all time there's not a lot of firsts left in this world and you know that was one i was able to achieve yeah oh that is very cool yeah and well and even if the same fan isn't coming i mean i think one of the advantages you have is uh i was at the the, the author alchemy summit I'll, I'll advertise for them the author right. alchemy summit this last week hey, is, and, that, uh, is that a picture of me i don't know that i got yes. I, I, don't, I don't think i got residuals on that <laughs> yeah. and uh one of the uh the people who was presenting was saying you know yes you could build a huge following on one platform uh you can build your brand in this way where it's you know it's 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 deep but it's not wide but the problem with that is you can get shut off a billionaire can go, hey, you're not on Facebook anymore. And that's yep. where all of your fans were. And so, yep. you know, being uh, being everywhere and, you know, for you being able to say, OK, if you're not a huge fan of my uh, my, uh, you know, TTRPG stuff, but I've got a book for you. And mm -hmm. so you're you know, you're it, it might not be the same fan, but it's a broad fan base of different fans. I've heard it referred to as being a T-shaped person. And I like that, um, that you can have a broad uh skill set capability or appeal but at least in some areas it's also driven like deeply you yeah. know i'm like a m-shaped person or like a like a like the yes. front of the parthenon shaped person or i'm like no i really can do all of these things but i mean having it's good you know th there's there's nothing wrong nothing at all wrong with being a fantasy author or some such but what I would advise everyone to do is obviously if you're fortunate enough to get a publishing deal for your, your, your three fantasy novels or what, you know, to get a trilogy deal or something, that's, that's a great thing. Do that and obviously fulfill, fulfill your deal. But your fourth book needs to be something completely different. At least have that arrow in your quiver. At least yeah. let it know, be known that you have this capacity to do this. That you're like, yes, I wrote the new Lord of the Rings. And also, I wrote the new Cujo. Right. You know? And the publisher may not want your Cujo. And that's fine. That's fine. But you've proven you can do it. Right. I totally you, agree. There was, yeah. some, there was a panel of folks, and they were talking about branding. And they had a couple of folks on the panel who were like, oh, yeah, I work with, you know, these four different pseudonyms. And I'm sitting back there going, don't do that. Mm -mm. You know, own it you can create lots of different things and that's wonderful. Like don't yep. pretend that these are different people, you know? Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's limits to that. Sure. If you're writing sure. you know, children's books and like, you know, really extreme erotica. Yeah. That's yeah. probably, you know, you might, you might turn yeah. off some fans, but by and large, people Maybe are going to go, yeah. I like that you can do more than one thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you'll find the audience that does, you know, um, you'll find the audience that does. And what, what I would recommend is, um, I mean, obviously kids books and hardcore smut is tough, but let's say, let's say you're a fantasy writer and you also write these like ultra authentic period history pieces. Yeah. Um, just have a presence in those communities and don't necessarily try and sell your fantasy book to the history buffs or vice versa, because there will be some overlap in your Venn diagram, but you don't need anybody to consume all your content. I don't, I, I know for a fact, nobody consumes all of mine. Right. Right. I yeah, barely consume yeah. all of my, I don't consume all of mine. And I was there's there when it was made. Yeah. Right. I mean, if we're putting out enough <laughs> yeah. stuff, there's no yeah. time in, you know, nobody, I don't expect anybody to have that much time in their lives. <laughs> one, one thing I'm always preaching the gospel of is a thousand loyal fans. Um, you, you can Google it because it's a, it's an essay that explains it in more detail, but at its core, you just need a thousand people that are going to buy anything you'll put out. I, and was, if you do I that, was just exposed yeah. to this this last weekend. I had never heard mm -hmm. this before. It's a, mm -hmm. It really is a great idea. Like, it's true goals that are yeah. sustainable if you've got yeah. a thousand people who are into your stuff you're golden yep. you've got a career you don't need tens of thousands or millions i mean that's wonderful that's wonderful but right. it, it is not necessary at well, all and it might not even be wonderful like you may get to the point yeah, where you, there, there is a there is a size of fan base which will make you miserable and acknowledging true. that like i would rather have a thousand people who are saying i encourage you to do your work than a million people saying do something else and that yeah. pressure you know ripping you apart like no, that is true. I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the work that I'm gonna do, and I would love to find a thousand people who want me to keep doing it. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
one of the things we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, our, our, our politics being so dangerous and scary right now. But I think one mm. of the ways that it has kind of compromised us as as creators is that the the outrage machine and the algorithms mm. are so ratcheted up to controversy that they sometimes force people to or encourage people don't force but they encourage people to take positions we wouldn't otherwise take mm -hmm. to the point where like i'll see people doing you know whatever the hot take is and i am actually second guessing is this person just promoting themselves by taking this you know really really you know offensive hurtful take or uh, you know do they actually believe this like i you know i i can't even parse that anymore are they just doing this for clout now and so I, I, you know, as kind of a way of spoofing that, what is your super controversial hot take that somebody could clip out of this show and go, oh my gosh, B. Dave Walter said that thing. Star Wars <laughs> episode three is the best Star Wars film. Star Revenge Wars the, episode three. Revenge of, the, Revenge of the Sith is the best Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, that that is going to be, <laughs> yes. You, you, you will absolutely have haters on that one. I My my son and I have debated this a lot because, you know, he's, it, it, I noticed that it's very generational. You know, mm -hmm. like he came into the, the you know, the, the series really, you know, with episode one, you know, and so he has m much fonder ideas about episode one than I do. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, and then his first, uh, father's day or my first father's day was taking him to see episode three. And mm -hmm. they gave out a poster that was, uh, Darth saying, who's your daddy. And I was like, that's pretty great as a brand new dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that episode three is, I would say absolutely the best of the prequels. I really like episode three, which I know is controversial. I like the last about five minutes of episode two also, because I'm old enough that the idea of seeing Yoda fight was so exciting to me. <laughs> so you know what was wild? I went to the theater to see episode two and I'm sitting there in the theater and this dude right behind me goes, I can't wait to see Yoda fight. And I'm like, motherfucker i did what you know like how are you gonna just sit in the theater and just like spoil something yeah 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 just, don't if anybody like, has what? not seen episode two i apologize formally for it, we're the past two. the statute of limitations i think now. so like, now it, it's, yes. it's been 25 years like yes. if, you, if you you were serious you'd have seen it by now yes. um not 20 uh, almost it was episode it was 2002 to 20 22 years 22 22 years, years. okay yeah um, i think i'm i think i'm golden there we're past we're past it but um yeah, don't ever don't ever spoil something while you're in the theater. Also, don't spoil anything when you're leaving the theater talking about it, too, yes, just for the record. Yes, as people are standing um, in line, yeah, they clearly, yeah. by, by virtue of geography, are in a place yep. where they have not seen the film yet. Shut up. <laughs> it's like, that, like that, that Homer thing, walking in, I can't believe Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's father. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ruin the movie for me. Yes. Yeah, uh... um, yeah it's uh, obviously art is subjective, um, but uh, I, I think it's deeper than that. I mean, these... These last three movies were a trash fire. Uh, I mean, The Force Awakens was a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Star Wars, but they had a very specific goal, and they achieved that goal, which was to reunite, reignite a love of Star Wars in a new generation. And my girls were much younger then, and I saw it with my own eyes. There's yep. lots of little girls dressed like Rey, lots of little yep. boys dressed like Kylo, and I'm like, okay, mission accomplished. Then, even though I feel like The Last Jedi is a crime against cinema, uh... It isn't all Ryan Johnson's, Rian Johnson's fault, and it's not all JJ's fault in the sense that if you try and develop a trilogy with no overarching That's the strategy, thing. yes, of course it's going to be trash. If just like yeah. right now, just right now, you and I are like, let's meet for lunch tomorrow at noon and then hang up the phone. Yeah. Tomorrow at noon, we will be in two very different places. Right. You know, the, the odds of us having arrived. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't dislike yeah. any individual film in the newest trilogy as a film. I hate them as a trilogy because they're... The, well, actually, I should say the third one is a mess because it's trying to pull these things together. That, it's, that, it's, that was it's an impossible the cliff notes, It's the cliff notes of two movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, but it's, the first you, two you can... I enjoyed, but they're just... There's no sense of an arc. Yep. Well, because there's not one. Uh, and yeah, and JJ tried to squeeze two movies into one, and and it it also doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and the issue too was not with JJ's style as such, because I think he did a pretty good job of facelifting Star Trek. But the problem is, Star Trek is about 
hopeful exploration and a better future. It is the best and brightest that every sentient species has to offer, working together to solve problems. And things go wrong, and then they fix them, and then things are good again. Star Wars is a dark, scummy universe where good is always on its back heel. Evil is either winning or about to win again. Star Wars is absolutely about the life that we live right now. Yeah, that's I know, the world right? we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and when you don't understand that, your stories fall apart. Yeah. The reason why I like episode three the most, and I don't actually claim that it is the superior film, I just, that it's my favorite is usually the claim. But I mean, if I'm just hot takes for heartburn, I'll right, say it's right. the best, um, is because in one thing the prequels have that the most recent movies don't, is they advance and expand the universe. They tell you something you don't know. You know more about the world that those characters occupy and that we've all spent hundreds or thousands of hours in imagining um, uh, in, in playing in that sandbox. The sandbox got bigger in the prequels. And it's not always anything you like, like midichlorians. Midichlorians was a stupid idea. It was the, a bad the, idea. You know, the forest is yeah. a bacterial infection. It's a dumb idea. Yeah, yeah. We, we, but, we shall not say that word. Well, yeah, and, and we don't. Even now, they're just yep. alluding to M count, you know what yep. I mean, in the Bad Batch. And you're like, you know, <laughs> but we got more. Yeah, that's you true. Know? And in episode three, I love so much the conflict between Obi-Wan and Anakin. I love so much the conflict between Yoda and the Emperor. Um, and it's, it was so funny to me because, again, you know, spoiler alert, 21 years later, right. I had so many people that were like, I can't believe Yoda lost to the Emperor. And I'm like, of course he lost to the Emperor. You don't right. go into hiding from someone you can beat. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, well, and I lost. really, I think yeah. I love Rogue One. And I think Rogue One really captured that, that mm -hmm. sense of, this is tragic. This is not a universe where things work out. This, yep. the, 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 you know, the, the characters that we're supposed to admire are, you know, murderers. They're not great because they've got to be, because this off, this universe is kind of awful. That's and so Andor I, I really has like that. a good job with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Andor, I think is the, 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 you know, and, and my son will argue Andor is, peak star wars like he thinks I, that's I, the best thing i agree i yeah. mean it, it, it's and it's funny um the brilliance of star wars and this is you know there's some other settings where this is kind of true but you can fit a space opera and then a space western about a gunslinging stepfather mm -hmm. and this spy drama and they all slot in perfectly and it all makes sense in that world and a samurai um, story and yeah. uh you know yeah. yeah um which i love all that you know um and then you know again the bad batch you a, a straight up military story here right. it, it's funny because you know people always thought you couldn't tell star wars stories without jedi and quite frankly i probably would have been one of those people if you just ask me if right. you were like should there be a show just about a bounty hunter with no jedi in it right. eh, basically no jedi in it uh or should there be a show just about some clones after the clone war i would have been like no yeah. And then fast forward and I'm like, just ride my veins, ride my just, just. Yep. I have not seen the, yeah. don't, don't spoil the newest season of Bad Batch. Cause I have not seen it yet, but I am very excited. That's, that's in my, uh. There are four episodes out of which I've seen three. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to watch this week's episode when you and I get done talking. Yes, so. I am. Uh, so I'm, what do you think so far? Um, it's good. Uh, I, I, it, it's a, a little bit of a slow burn early. I think that's why they released the first three episodes at the same time. Um, yeah. I think they got the, now this is all theory from here on. This is not a spoiler. This is theory. Uh, you know, so I, I give the disclaimer. This is me, you know, waxing philosophical again. They have a similar problem that Rebels had, that by the end of this story, they got to explain where were these people during the, mm -hmm. the rebellion, right? Yeah. Which means they've either got to be dead or they've got to be gone. Yeah. And of the remaining clones, uh, I think two of them are going to make it out of this. Mm. And I think they're probably going to want to take Omega and head for the Outer Rim because they're like, we're going to go raise this child somewhere safe yeah. where, you know, they're not going to come for her. Um, Which from an IP perspective is smart because you can always go and then we're going to do the Omega show in 10 years, you know, we'll do the Omega show in later. 10 years or quite frankly, bring her back in the live action content because right. she'd be she'd be the right age. You know what I mean? Because she's like, uh, I think what it, we established like biologically, I think she's like three or eight or something. So she's just a little older than Luke. 
Yeah. So any any story that Luke is in, actually, she yeah she's yeah just a little older than Luke. So any story that Luke is in, yeah, reasonably Omega can be in too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And quite frankly, she could be even younger because you're just like they did something with my genes where I don't age. And then well, or you know, time dilation. You know? Oh, yeah, because we right. were flying out to the outer rim, yeah. time was moving differently, yeah. and you can show up and have her be you know 17 but, in the end of Mandalorian yep. and yep. We'll all go, because okay because reasons. Yes. So. <laughs> if I had to wager a guess, that's 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 where I think is headed. I, I don't I don't really see a world where all of the remaining clones in Omega are just kind of like one big happy Brady Bunch yeah. family out somewhere right in Tauntauns. I don't I don't think that's yeah. in the <laughs> folks who have I not seen it. I, I would you know encourage folks who are Star Wars fans check out Bad Batch. But I will tell you, the first episode did not work for me. I was like, this is. It's the Fantastic Four. Like, it is too cliche supergroup. The characters are not developed enough. You've got the strong one, the smart one, the hunter one, the, you know, like, and then, like many things that start off with tropes, it gets better and better. Like, as yeah. we, you know, develop those characters and they become more and more interesting. Uh, so, yeah, stick, you know, check it out, but give it a few episodes uh, in that first season and then you'll go, oh, yeah, this is really good. Yep. Yep. Um, Highly recommended. Yeah. So, uh, so where can folks find you when you're not, you know, watching Bad Batch? When you're online, where are your, what's your best presences where people can look you up? Uh, you can find me all over the interwebs at B. Dave Walters. Uh, I'm the most active on Twitter, even though it is a raging trash fire. Um, it is still the best raging trash fire, and an heir apparent has yet to emerge. Uh, also on my website, again, theundisputedacademy.com, where I got 14-day tutorials for writing. I, I'll save you five years on your writing career. If you want to write novels, uh, screenplays, comic books, graphic novels, all of those things I have done and published, I will show yeah. you how at uh, theundisputedacademy.com. Uh, and yeah, uh, beyond that, I'm, I'm everywhere, and my DMs are open. So if you have any questions, is shoot it to me, and I'll try and help you out to the best of my ability. Oh, and cool. also our podcast, Writing About Dragons and Shit, which I write with fantasy author Aaron M. Evans, uh, and the the yep, the, and and the hunky uh the the hunky Trevor, and um yeah, check it out. Yeah, we, we we've got like a a hundred and three episodes, I think. I think so. Yeah. I, I've already had Aaron on the show, but who else would you recommend I have on as a guest? Uh, I mean, Trevor Bettis is is great. Uh, our, our, our the the third horseman of of our triumvirate. Yeah, um, yeah. I recommend Trevor. I will reach out. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so some folks I should thank before we uh, finish up. Uh, thanks to the artist Max Oakland, who reached out and provided one of his songs for our intro song, I Prefer the Dusk. Let Max know you like it by following him on Twitter at Max Oakland with three Ds. And thanks to Halizna CCO for their song Kids for the ad break. If you're in a band and would like your song used on the show, I would love to highlight a listener's work like Max's song, so email that to me. Thanks to Doug, the producer, for making the show sound good and taking the blame when it doesn't. And I cannot forget to mention, Writers Not Writing is a production of Not A Pipe Publishing, so please go to notapipepublishing.com, check out the amazing books written by writers who didn't procrastinate too much. If you like this show, rate it and review it wherever you found it. And Dave, what book is, should people check out of yours first? It depends on their what their fan you know what what their fans yeah, are. Depends, right? depends on what you're into. Yeah, um, I think the comic book Dungeons and Dragons: The Dark and Wish. I, I quite like that. It, it's it's basically a fantasy Greek tragedy. Ah. Um, but yeah, quite quite proud of that one. And so I would encourage everybody check it out and rate and review. It really does make a difference. You know, if you true. grab that thing somewhere, click on that fifth star make Dave's day. It's a it's a it genuinely is uh, you know it makes a difference for authors. Uh, and similarly for this show, you know, click on that little thumbs up icon, please. Uh, you know, I'm too old to say smash that like button, but, you know, <laughs> you can gently tap on it. It's really uh, appreciated. So, Dave, what would be your advice for everybody going into their week? If you have it in your head that you want to try and do this, do it. Um, the Always listen to the still small voice in your mind because that one's the truth. Uh, the one that is always calm and that is always kind to you. The one that says things like, I'd like to write a novel. And then other louder voices come in that you can't do that. You don't have the talent to do that. Nobody would ever publish it. And you would just look stupid. Blah, 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 blah. You can always ignore that one. That one's not you. That's 
what you've assumed and assimilated and assembled over the course of your life that are the judgments and the guidance of other people, of your parents, of your friends, of your family, of society, of things that you've seen on social media, that those things just swirl around you like a debris field around a planet that aren't you. The truth is that still small one that comes back and is like, yeah, I'm going to be cool to write a book. Yeah. And always listen to that one and just try. It costs you nothing to try. If you were like, what if nobody likes it? That's okay. It'll still exist. What if nobody reads it? That's okay. It'll still exist because the worst thing you write is better than the best thing that you did not write. Once it's out, you can polish it. You can fix it. You can update it. And quite frankly, let me just tell you in advance, your first work will be trash. Let me just, yeah. let me just accept that for you. Just let me, let me just help you dispel yeah. that illusion, you know? And whatever your best is now, your absolute best work, if you stick at it 10 years from now, you'll come back and read it and see how it could have been better. But none of that will happen unless you start. So you have to start and you have to finish as long as you write at least a word a day, a word, yep. a word over a long enough timeline, it'll be finished. It'll be a long time, but it'd be finished. But what's more likely is if you sit down to write a word, you'll write a sentence. If you write a sentence, you'll write a paragraph. If you write a paragraph, you might write a page. And if you do that, before you know it, it's all done. Yeah, a page a day is a book in a year. Mm -hmm. So write that page a day. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I always uh, tell folks, you know, uh, in addition to that, while you are trying to create that, remember that a book without spaces would be gibberish and our lives need spaces too. So give yourself the permission to have a little space in your life as well, to do the things like the daydreaming and the goal setting that you were talking about, to, you know, to, to think, to plan, um, and <laughs> to sleep perchance to dream. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. And the, the, it's a lot of perchance, uh, uh, lately, uh, I feel like, uh, but yes, maybe, maybe sleep, uh, would be good. Um, uh, <laughs> And then, uh, you know, no matter what, uh, you know, you're going to procrastinate. That happens. And just know that Dave and I are still proud of you. Absolutely. If I take my time.